Hi, my name's Nat, and I'm going to talk to you today about three ways to use text variables in Microsoft Word. This doesn't have anything to do with programming or Visual Basic. To explain what I mean by variables, let me show you the problem I'm trying to solve. Here's a document I've created which has some key information typed into the front page in the header. Now if I update this document from version 1.1 to 1.2, I have to make a manual correction here, and here, and maybe in other places as well. If I forget to update that value in any one place, then there's a risk that the document will get out of sync. That's what I mean by a variable. I want to be able to type a value in one place, and then have other bits of text automatically update to match the changes. There are at least three ways that I know of to make this happen, but first before we get into that, we're going to set up Word to display fields and bookmarks. Here's what you do. Go to File, Options, Advanced, and then scroll down to Show Document Content. Click on Show Bookmarks and set Field Shading to Always. I also like to set Word to show paragraph marks. You can toggle this by going to the Home tab, and in the Paragraph section you click Show Hide Paragraph Marks. By the way, that funny symbol, it's called a pilcrow. Okay, now that we're set, let me show you Method 1, which uses Document Properties and Field Codes. Now go back to your document and open File, then Properties, and click Advanced Properties. Click on the Custom tab. Create a new property by giving it a name, a type, and a value. What I'm going to do is create a new custom property called My Version Field. This is a text field, and I'll give it a value of V1.0. Click Add, and then OK. Now when I go back to my document, I can insert this field by going to Insert, Quick Parts, Field, and select Doc Property. Then I select My Version Field out of the list and click OK. And there it is. I can copy and paste that field over to the other side here. And there we go. Now remember we made fields visible by changing our settings back at the start of this lesson. Those fields won't be shaded when you print, and other users won't be able to see them as shaded either unless they've changed their settings in Word like we did back at the start. Now both of those fields are linked. If I want to change the document version number, then I go back to that secret dialog box again, and I make some changes to the value, and click Modify. To get those fields to update, you might have to select all and press F9 to refresh the fields, or else do a right click and then click Update Field. Now that's pretty clever, but it's also awkward. The dialog box for updating my new document property is hidden in a frustrating place. Good luck teaching your colleagues to update your variables in the correct way. If only there was some way you could type your changes directly into the document. Well, good news, you can. That's method two. This tricky trick uses document properties, field codes, and bookmarks. This time around, I'm going to nominate this box up here as my input location and dynamically link it to the other fields. What I do is I select this text and click Insert Bookmark. I'm going to call this My Version Bookmark, then click Add. A pair of braces has appeared around the text. We can only see those braces because we set Word to show bookmarks back at the start. Now I go ahead and create a custom document property just like I did before. I'll give it the same name, and I'll set the type to text, but instead of giving it a value, I'll click this little box here to link to content, and then select My Version Bookmark. Because of that link, the field is now going to be a copy of whatever's typed inside the bookmark. Just make a change inside the braces, save the file, and then press F9 to refresh the other field, or do a right click and update field. This is cool, right? Just tell your users to make their changes in one master location in the document. But look what happens here when I use backspace and make some changes. Part of my variable is left hanging outside of the bookmark braces, so it doesn't get copied over into the field. Other users who haven't turned on display bookmarks won't understand what's going on, and your document will end up broken. If only there was some way to make field boundaries obvious to other users without requiring any special setup in Word. Oh, what do you know, you can. That's going to be our method 3, which uses an even trickier trick to insert default document properties in a slightly different way. This is like the first time around, but the secret here is to insert document properties by going to Insert, Quick Parts, and then instead of clicking Fields, click Document Properties. Select one of these properties from the menu. 
Back in method one, we went to fields and chose a field called doc properties. Doing it this way lets you choose one of the default document properties and gives you some extra functionality. Here I've decided that status is going to hold my version number. Look at this. My field shows up in something called a content control box and is prompting me to type in a value if it's empty. I'll insert the same document property field over here, and both locations are not only linked, but you can type in either box and the other one will update immediately without needing an F9 refresh. You don't need to do any special setup to see the content control box. But that's not all. You can view and make changes to default document properties in this screen when you press File. Or you can click on Properties, then Show Document Panel to bring up a special window where you can change the default properties on the main screen. I'm going to use default document properties to change all these repeated bits of information into linked fields. Look how handy this is as a way to control the information in the document. Now for one final trick, default document properties are included in the Windows metadata, so you can see them in Windows Explorer by clicking on the bottom bar and setting the size of the properties bar to large. The catch is that you can only use pre-existing default document properties for this trick. Those are the ones in this list here. There are ways that you can put a content control box around any custom variable, but that's pretty involved. All of this functionality is available straight out of the box without any fancy setup required. For most cases, I'm going to suggest that you go straight to method 3. I hope this video tour through a few different methods has given you a deeper understanding of how fields, bookmarks, and document properties work in Microsoft Word. Check out my blog at drnatjg.wordpress.com. Cheers, thanks for watching.